And all you have to do is avoid going into YouTube by tolerating boredom. And if you can avoid opening up something on your computer or loading up a game, like loading up whatever, Reddit, like whatever, right? I, I use those because that's what I get distracted with. If you can just learn to sit with that boredom, your mind will naturally coalesce back into study. So there's a particular skill, which if you can learn, then you will be far, far more productive. And that skill is the ability to tolerate boredom. I know it sounds kind of weird, but I want you guys to think a little bit about the process of how you get distracted and where your days go. Okay. So this is where, um, so I want you guys to think about what's going on when you try to work. Okay. So like, here's you. And then like, here's the book. Oh God, I can't write a book. I can't draw a book. This is a book. Okay. You're, so you're trying to read a book. So you're looking at the book. All right. And so generally speaking, what happens is your mind tends to be like one pointed, right? So this is going to be like a one pointed mind. And you're looking at the book for a few seconds, like let's say a minute or two, you're like reading the book. And then something interesting happens. Your mind goes from this to like a scattered. Okay. So this is one pointed mind. And this is a scattered mind. All right. So like, you guys know what I mean? Like, you're, you're, cause you're like, I'm reading the book and then your mind is like, oh, like, let's think about random crap. And so then when your mind becomes scattered, then, then what it sort of starts to do is it starts to go in like all these different directions, right? So it's going over here. It's going over here. It's going over here. And, and then what used to happen is that over time, you'd like your mind would wander, like five minutes would pass, you'd be sitting at a library. And then the mind eventually like coalesces back into a one pointed mind. And then you're focused on the book again. And if we think about the process of studying, what it is, is like, it's like focused mind and then it scatters again. And then it goes back to focused and then it scatters again. And on good days, you know, your focused mind is, is longer and then the scattering is shorter. Right. So like generally speaking, as you study, this is the pattern of mind. Does that make sense? So your mind kind of coalesces and then it's like one pointed again. And then, you know, there are some things that can help this, like, you know, caffeine helps this process. Usually, unless you have too much, you know, so like stimulant medication from ADHD helps this process. Um, and so there, there are all kinds of things that can kind of cause you to coalesce your mind. So we also taught, um, so another uh, important part of this process is something called dharana and pratyahara. So we've talked a little bit about these, um, but that's not going to be our focus today. These we can sort of explore a little bit later. Okay. So dharana is focus. So these are like meditation techniques that train your mind to become one pointed. Pratyahara is sensory withdrawal. So these are practices that um, essentially cause you to restrain the senses. So let's like think about this for a second. What are the things that shatter um, a one pointed mind? So like, let's say I'm studying the library and then someone brings in like a plate of barbecue, right? So then like I smell the barbecue and then my mind shatters. Okay. Let's say that I'm uh, studying and, um, you know, like I hear a ping on my phone. Someone just texted me. So BBQ. You know, sound from phone, notification, right? So, and then what this does is shatters my focus. So the, the reason is because my focus gets shattered by the indriyas or the sense organs. So, so pratyahara is the practice of restraining your sense organs. So like keeping your eyes focused on what they should be focused on, getting your nose under control, getting your ears under control, like basically restraining your attention where you want it. Okay. So that's not the focus today. So all of these are about moving from here to here. Okay. But what I'm going to, what we're going to focus on today is not moving from here to here. We're going to focus on this phase right here, because this is where a lot of people kind of mess up. So let's think about what happens when your mind is scattered. Okay. So the mind enjoys being focused and the mind enjoys being entertained. So mind enjoys focus. Right. And if we think about mind enjoying entertainment, what is entertainment? 
entertainment is simply a sensory experience that sort of makes it very easy for your mind to be focused. So if I play a video game, like like the whole point of like playing Dota is that Dota cause, causes my mind to coalesce into this, right? Video games do this. So if we really think about it, what we see is that our mind actually really enjoys being focused. Like the common element is that the mind appreciates focus. And then even when we when we think about studying, like I don't know if you guys have had this experience, but like sometimes studying can be fun. Like you're kind of in a groove and you're like learning stuff, you know, and your mind is kind of focused. It really enjoys that. So where does the problem arise? Like why is studying so hard? Studying is so hard because our mind gets distracted, right? And so it, it shatters into this again. And in this moment, we're bored, right? Because you like, you're like, I don't want to study. Like your mind is like, oh, let's look at the book. Let's look at the book. And then you're like, there's another part of your mind that's like, no, I don't want to do that. And this is where I think that studying has gotten so much harder for people. Like we hear this so much more now that, you know, video games are addictive. I'm addicted to YouTube. Like I spend hours watching YouTube. I have no motivation, et cetera. Because now, actually, something existed that didn't exist 30 years ago, which is algorithmic entertainment. So what used to be, so like, let's think about like, you know, tw like in the 1950s, if I'm at the library and I get distracted, what would my mind do? I pull out my comic book and I read my comic book for like 10 minutes, okay? And then eventually my mind kind of scatters again, and then I focus back on studying. But now we have something that's like way more devastating, which is that when we enter these bored states, we log on to YouTube, we get on Reddit, you know, like we get on these things, we get on like, let's say, you know, Instagram, whatever, Twitter. And the problem is that these things are not going to like occupy your attention. So the comic book occupies your attention, let's say for 20 minutes. The problem is that the second you open these up, you're gone for three hours, right? Because with algorithmic entertainment, what happens is like YouTube is going to suggest things to you that will keep your mind like focused in that direction. Reddit is like, and this is the crazy thing. I know this sounds weird, but I want you guys to really think about this for a second. You are tailoring these websites to pull your attention towards them, right? You're giving them like a cheat code to keep your attention occupied. So when you log on to Reddit and like I have all of my favorite subreddits that I'm subscribed to, over time, I'm making the website more addictive to me. YouTube, this isn't just YouTube's fault. It is like also like your fault because as you subscribe to more content, it's going to be like more entertaining, right? As you watch YouTube videos, like YouTube's job is to make you like enjoy, like have a good experience on YouTube. Like you're not going to like if you open up YouTube and like it's a bunch of nanny vlogs, and you're not interested in that. It's like that's a failure of a website, right? So that's they're doing what they're supposed to do. And it just has this really bizarre consequence, which is that you're training YouTube to be more predatory towards your attention. You're making it more addictive by subscribing to shit. And if you subscribe to a bunch of subreddits that you don't like or watch a bunch of YouTube videos and then get all this crap that you don't care about posted on your YouTube, then you're not going to use the website, right? So this is like the really tricky thing is that when we become bored for a second, this is the real loss and we get distracted and there's algorithmic entertainment. Boredom plus algorithmic entertainment means three hours of your life gone and no productivity. GG. Go next. Right? Get wrecked. So the question then becomes with... Al oh, wrong one. Oh. Um, yeah. The question then becomes like, what do we do about this, right? So like once we slip down this road, we're gone. The three hours is the price that you pay. Because Reddit is designed, YouTube is designed to restrain your attention. So what they're going to do is they're going to take your attention away from studying. Okay? Because that's what they're going to do. So then the question becomes like, and then people ask like, you know, oh, how do I stop watching YouTube? Like you can't, it's going to be really hard. Like once your attention is over here to like pull your attention back towards studying, this is going to require a lot of effort. And so then what happens is we look at people and we say, oh my God, this person is so disciplined because some people can watch YouTube for like 10 minutes and then they go back to studying. Okay, so this is studying. 
And so then we say this person is disciplined. Can I, what's... And then we say, I'm not disciplined. I'm lazy. So this is where the lazy person goes. So the question is, okay, what do you do? So last week we talked about building conscientiousness. Okay, so how to become, how to move from lazy to being disciplined. But there's a re real important secret here, which is right here. Because if you can avoid this step right here, then you don't need to be disciplined. You guys get this? And so then the question, if you can avoid opening up YouTube, because once you go, once YouTube is open, it's designed, they pay like people millions of dollars, like, Reddit, whatever, all of these companies, right? Um, they pay the, like they pay millions of dollars to different engineers to like make the website more usable by the users, like creating a good user experience. I don't think that they're like being, you know, evil about it. That's just like, they're like, hey, we want to make a website better. And so the key thing is that once you go over here, you're, you're screwed, finished. So how do you avoid this step? And then the answer is to learn to tolerate boredom. Okay, so what you guys need is patience. If you're lazy, if you're good at sitting around and not doing anything, that's totally fine. We're just going to double down on that. And let's see what happens when you do that. Okay, so I'm studying. Then my mind fractures. Okay, so what happens if I just sit with it? Right, you're going to have all these thoughts and impulses. You're going to be thinking about barbecue. Then you're going to be thinking about gaming. You're going to be thinking about laundry. You're going to be thinking about how this guy is such a noob. And your mind is kind of wandering. And then eventually, your mind will sort of start to coalesce. Okay, it's going to go into this. And then eventually, it's going to go into this. And then eventually, it'll go right back here to studying. So this is what you guys need to do. You have to understand that your mind is like a bird in flight, right? So it like jumps up, starts flying all over the place. And all you have to do is avoid going into YouTube by tolerating boredom. And if you can avoid opening up something on your computer or loading up a game, like loading up whatever, Reddit, like whatever... Right. I, I use those because that's what I get distracted with. If you can just learn to sit with that boredom, your mind will naturally coalesce back into studying. It'll happen like sort of effortlessly. All you have to do is learn how to tolerate that boredom in the middle. And if you think about what's happened in our society, okay, so this is kind of interesting. If you think about what's happened to our brains, how has technology affected our brains? What technology has done is make us like weak at tolerating boredom. Okay, so what it, it's almost like we're running around with like electric wheelchairs for our mind. And then like if you run, if, if you stop walking and you start using an electric wheelchair, you're going to decondition your body to with for physical activity and walking, right? So what have we done? Our, our technology has deconditioned our mind to tolerate boredom. And just think about this for a second, right? Like, so when you're in the car, it's like podcast time, baby. When I'm cooking, it's podcast time. I'm going to be, I'm going to be productive. This is the danger, right? So you'll see these websites where people will talk about, yeah, I read a bunch of books and I like listen to a bunch of audio books and podcasts and stuff like that. I have entertainment time. And then like, you know, we're always doing something. Our attention is always on something and we get bored very, very easily. And so like, you know, having everything at your fingertips on your phone is like terrible for your ability to tolerate boredom. And so what's happened is we've become unable to handle boredom. And as our mind gets weak at handling boredom, we, be, we like lose productivity because then we get lost in these like apps and stuff. And so everyone who's talking about productivity, you guys have got to understand that productivity starts with the ability to tolerate boredom. Just that. Just learn how to be bored. If you can learn how to be bored, then your productivity will go through the roof. Because then in those key moments where you are bored and you reach for that thing that it used to be a five minute distraction, it used to be a 15 minute distraction, it used to be a 20 minute distraction. Now it's a three hour time commitment. And once you like step into the ring with like, 
you know, this this algorithm that's designed to restrain your attention for three or four hours, you are like way outmatched. It's just your little brain against hundreds of millions of dollars worth of like engineering that is designed to prey on your neuroscience. You guys are outmatched. You can't win then. So the key is to not step into the ring. The way that you not you don't step into the ring is to tolerate boredom. Right? So like, what does that mean? How do I learn to tolerate boredom? So we had a great exercise that one of our coaching clients came up, came up with. Fantastic and very difficult. Is to sit and stare at a wall for an hour with no distractions. And it is devastatingly difficult. But really cool stuff will happen. Very, very cool stuff will happen if you guys just sit at a wall for an hour. I know everyone's like, oh my God, one hour of not doing anything. Oh my God, an entire hour of doing nothing. How am I going to tolerate that? Right? So don't even meditate. Uh Uh-uh. Meditation is doing something. Not allowed to meditate. Just sit in an hour and sit with yourself. And then your mind is going to do all kinds of stuff. It's going to be like absolutely crazy for about 20 or 25 minutes. And then it's going to be like really awesome. Like the second half, if you guys can make it, like is going to be amazing because your mind is going to like come up with stuff and it's going to be like weird and entertaining. Sometimes what will happen is like a lot of negativity will come up. You'll start to like realize how bad of a person you are and like how much of a failure you are and stuff like that. And everyone's like, how do I learn acceptance? Like, how do I learn to sit with it? That's the way that you learn how to sit with it. Right? Just sit and look at a wall for an hour. Just do nothing. And then if you guys want to, you guys can do easy mode. An easy mode of sitting at the wall is going for a walk for also one hour, right? So get up and go outside. It'll be, it'll like feel great. Like you'll still be bored. You're going to want to put your headphones in. I want to listen to an audio book. I want to listen to a podcast. I want to listen to this. I want to do this. And like, just think about how much, you know, there was a time where like, okay, so I would wake up in the morning. I'd do yoga. I'd study. I'd turn on the audio book while I was showering. I'd list, be listening while I was eating. I would You know, as soon as I turn it off, like on the computer, I pop in my headphones, walking to the subway, on the subway, pull out the Kindle, put away the Kindle, back to the audio book, to the lecture hall, listening to the lecture, trying to listen to the lecture because it's boring, which is really hard because I've, I've really not trained my attention well. And then it's like back to the audio book, a little bit of stuff on the computer, screen, phone, you know, it's like our, your, our minds are constantly externalized towards something. We rely on external technological crutches to keep our minds focused on one thing. And in doing so, we have lost the capacity to focus our mind where we want it to. We've become victims to the screen, right? Because like if my, the only way I can keep my attention on something is if it is entertaining enough. And then what we do is we call ourselves lazy because we can't get anything done. So where does like, where's the linchpin to all of this stuff? It is learning to tolerate boredom. So if you can tolerate boredom, then your mind will listen to you. Because what boredom is, is the biggest rebellion of mind. You guys realize like how much you detest how hard it is to like be bored? It's like imagine, so I I have a great idea for you guys. Okay, so just think about this for a second. So I know people aren't flying right now because of COVID, but think about going on an international flight with nothing to do. No books, no electronic devices, torture, absolute torture, eight hours on a plane with nothing to do. GG. Think about how much you detest that. And what is it that you face when you're on a flight with yourself with nothing to do? What, like, what's so bad about that? Literally, what is so bad about that? It is that your mind has no attention, nothing to focus its attention. It's just you. You're just with yourself and you're bored with your mind. So if you want to go the marathon route, like take an international flight. I mean, don't do it now because of COVID, obviously. But like 
You know, think about that for a second. Like, think about how how much of a victim you are and how poorly you are at tolerating your own company with just you hanging out by yourself. It's so terrifying. Terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. So this is the cool thing, is that all this stuff can be fixed. Right? All you have to do is learn to tolerate boredom. So just kind of going back to that. Okay, so like, oh, can't scroll. So it all comes back to this right here. And if you can learn how to sit still with this, then your mind will naturally return to focus. Right, because eventually what will happen is, is and if, if you guys are wondering about how is that so natural, because your mind hates boredom, right? So at some point, your mind is eventually going to say anything. I've been sitting on this flight for six hours with nothing to do. Give me a te chemistry textbook, please. Anything to stop having nothing. Chemistry, physics, whatever. I'll take anything. Anything, master, please. Don't, don't make me do this anymore. I give up. I'll do whatever you want. I'll even study for my test. Please. Right? Because normally, you are the slave and the mind is the master. And the goal of what we do here is training you to be in charge of the mind. So I'll leave you guys with one analogy. So in the Bhagavad Gita, which is sort of a text on Hinduism, but, or I mean, it's people kind of in the Hindu religion sort of say it's a religious text, whatever. There's a lot of good stuff in, in religious texts and especially in Gita. And there's this guy, Arjun, and his charioteer is this guy named Krishna. And Krishna says that, Arjun, your mind is like a chariot with like five horses being like pulling it. And your life is going to be successful if you are in control of the horses. And if the horses are like doing whatever they want to, your life is going to be a mess. And the horses are essentially your mind. Really, they're your indriyas or your sense organs. But it's like, who's controlling? Like, are the horses, is your mind controlling you or are you controlling your mind? And what you guys really need to do, like if you want to like be productive and you want to be successful and all that good stuff, is to have your mind do what you tell it to do. Like if you wake up in the morning and you're like, bitch, we're going to study today. And your mind is like, okay, whatever you say. But otherwise, it's the other way around. It's like your mind is like one of these kids who's like a complete spoiled brat. And the kid is like, ah, we were going to do this today. Nah, I don't want to study. Fuck you. I'm going to play LOL all day. What are you going to do about it, mom? Fuck you. GG. Right? So learn to be bored. And then you will be successful. <laughs>